and welcome everybody here on Twitch chat and everybody watch on, on YouTube later on for our patch 1.8 live reaction. This patch just came out, so we're going to kind of go through and see what's going to be changing tomorrow with patch 1.8. So th the patch is going to be having the Call of the Mountain expansion whoa, arriving um, with Targon, and that's going to be live approximately 11 a.m. Pacific time tomorrow, August 26th. So approximately 25 hours from now, um, whenever we are recording this. All right, so Call of the Mountain. Um, as as y'all know, we got the new region. We got Targon. We're going to have 89 total cards, 82 non-champions, and the seven new champions. Um, and then the second, and so that's the name of the first expansion. The second expansion, we don't know the name of yet. That will be released in October, most likely the last week of October, and then also most likely the last week of December. So basically two months apart. Um, and so then these three expansions together are the um call of the mountain is set so that's that's the set and it that is includes three expansions in one set and then two months after december which is february we will have a new set re revealed with a new region and we'll have three new expansions with that new set so that's that's what we kind of have here so we kind of go in sets of three expansions that kind of go together with the new regions um uh Thanks, Lord. Thank you. All right, so um, our new region is Targon. On this towering mountain, cosmetic, cosmetic, whoops, <laughs> cosmic, uh, cosmic beings lend their might to mortals. Astral dragons soar beyond the sky. Tribes of the faithful devout themselves to the sun and moon. Playing Targon endows you with the ability to raise your units to new heights. You win by reaching the apex of your power and confronting enemies with awesome force. Align yourself with the celestial, and the stars themselves will ordain your victory. All right, so yeah, we have uh, new cards. So 51 are going to be in Targon. So Targon will be the smallest region to start with, but we can certainly expect um, quite a few uh, tar new Targon cards in both the second and third expansions that will be coming after this. But to start with, it's going to be the smallest region, and it will only have four champions, Leona, Diana, Aurelian Soul, and Torek. No, Tarek. Tarek. I'm getting that one. Um, can, you know, whenever you combine that with the other regions that all have five champions, um, except for now Freljord, Ionia, and Shadow Isles, <clears throat> they will be the regions with six champions, with Trundle, Lulu, and Nocturne, respectively. But then that should even out. So, so Freljord, Ionia, and Shadow Isles will have six champions. But there's, um, if we think about all of the regions getting to six champions, Targon needs two more. And then you have, so that's two champions. And then um, Piltover and Zon, Demacia, Bilgewater, and um, the Noxus. Those, all those regions need an, one additional champion. So that's six champions total. And as you can see, with the two expansions, they'll each have three champions, so six champions total. So after we get done with the whole Targon set, it should all be pretty evened up with the amount of cards in Targon and all the other regions, and they all the regions will have six total champions. At least that's just my guess. That's that's my assumption. <clears throat> um, let's see. Oh, well, actually, it says that right here in the patch notes. By the time the third expansion is released and the Call of the Mountain set is complete, all regions, including Targon, will have an equal share of champions and near equal share of other cards. So, yep, that's how it's going to be. Uh, let's see. All right, so a new region road, region road updated. So Targon will now join the regions of Runeterra with its own region road. And the roads of Freljord, Ionia, and Shadow Isles have been extended just a little bit so you can pursue all the new champions and cards in Call of the Mountain. So Targon Region Road will have 20 levels. Um, all the other regions have 25 right now. And uh, there will not be a Targon Regional card back yet. That will, revi that will arrive after the October expansion. Your Freljord, Ionia, and Shadow Isles region roads that are at 25 right now will go from 25 to 29 now. So they'll have a few extra levels. Um, 
and the new those those new levels from 25 through 29 will only drop call of the mountain cards um, unless you have all of them and you need existing cards from patch 1.8, levels 1 through 25 on all existing roads can now drop Call of the Mountain cards, and levels added in Rising Tides are no longer anchored to just Rising Tides cards. Okay, so now levels 1 through 25 are all the same kind of level, and they're not anchored to Rising Tides. They can have um, the launch set or Rising Tides or Call of the Mountain cards. Uh, the Bilgewater region road now benefits from the xp boost level system you earn extra xp towards completing early region ro road levels so that's for the newer you know for you newer players um you get extra xp to boost through the region roads throughout the first few levels um and it looks like i guess the first it's the first 12 levels um you have you have get extra xp and uh yeah so that, that system will continue to be adjusted over time. So yeah, so if you're a newer player, get to get those um, rewards faster. All right, looks like we got a new lab coming up, Discover Targon. Uh, Discover Targon says, choose from one of six pre-made decks packed with new cards and strategies from Targon. So yeah, so we'll have, we'll have six pre-made decks with a bunch of Targon cards. So even if you don't have the um, shards or ability to craft all the new cards right away, you'll be able to play the lab and play some pre-made decks with the new cards and really uh, get a feel for the new cards. That's pretty sweet. And so your six decks, um, their names are Friends Forever, Crystalline Strength, Blaze of Glory, Align the Stars, Lurking Darkness, and Star Ramp. Cool. All right, develop, developer notes. Um, so balancing things from Call of the Mountain. All right, let's kind of read this. This is an important thing um, as far as balancing the game. Now that, we, now that we'll be releasing cards every two months, we also need to adjust the ways we approach balance updates over time. Our goal remains monthly updates to keep the game healthy and balanced, but we also want new card content to be at the forefront when released. We want, uh, we want to focus the bulk of our live design attention on updates around the midway point between expansions with more minor adjustments around when we release new cards. So I think the, the important thing that this is saying is that since we know that we're going to be having new expansions every um, every two months, you know, like right now in August, we have one, we'll have a new one in October. Um, so the, the focus of our live design attention will be updates around the midway point between expansions, which is after one month. So basically, we have the end of August here, we have our, our uh, new new expansion, they're basically saying that in one month, the end of September, that's whenever we're going to have a, a pretty large balance um, patch, depending on what needs to happen. Like after, you know, like let the metagame kind of settle, see what happens. And in one month we'll have, um, that's whenever the, the biggest uh, update will happen. And then one month after that, we're going to have our new expansion in October. So in that spirit, we're making a few smaller changes with this patch in part to test out what those smaller updates may look like after this one the next patch won't be landing for three weeks rather rather than the usual two so we're spreading our upcoming balance efforts across both of the next two patches this will help ensure more flexibility with adjustments after call of the mountains release and provide cleaner windows to make any follow-up tweaks where possible, we'd also like to continue providing previews of what we've been working on for the upcoming patches, and in the, the case of 1.1 and 1.11, things may shift between them. A few of those things include. All right, so um, 1.1 is going to be the update that's going to be happening in three weeks, and then 1.11 will be two weeks after that. Um, so like we're we're at we're at 1.08 right now, or we're at 1. I'd put it at 1.8. I guess, is it supposed to be 1.08? I don't know. They call it 1.8. But anyway, uh, that's going to be the one like after the new set. I guess it just kind of uh, resets. All right, but anyway. So what, what we can expect in about three weeks or so, a major update for Lee Sin, giving him more options for synergies and allowing him to come online and impact the game earlier in a match. Ooh, so we're going to be lowering the mana cost of Lee Sin and trying to get him to have uh, be more synergistic. Um, yeah, allow him to have a bigger impact. 
That sounds awesome. Hey, King Sniff with the resub new set hype. I know, can't wait for it tomorrow. Can't wait for it tomorrow. That's gonna be awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, we're already gonna do um, an extra long stream tomorrow with these, um, you know, hitting the bonus stream sub goal today. All right, uh, also adjustments to the difficulty of Ezreal's level up quest. Ooh, so maybe Ezreal's gonna need like 10 instead of eight. I could see that. Um, so, you know, maybe maybe Ezreal's going to be a little bit more difficult. And adjustments to Yordle Grifter's Allegiance effect. I can definitely see that. Yordle Grifter is, is so good with the Allegiance effect. You get four mana, draw two cards, and get a 3-3. Three, three. Um, that's, that's an awesome card. So, yeah, I definitely see that changing. So so those are some, some balance changes that we'll have in the future, but that's not going to be happening yet. Sadly, those all seem like awesome changes to happen now, but that's going to happen in the future. As far as card updates for now, we have a couple. All right, so we have, let's put these two up. We have Fury of the North, which you'll all know that this card that's seen so much play is give an ally plus four plus four this round is what it has been. And now it will be giving an ally plus three plus four this round. So it says, Fury of the North sees play in a higher variety of archetypes than is typical for a buff spell due to its vers versatility and outright potency. This adjustment aligns the effect more towards Freljord's defensive-oriented spells, reduces its finishing potency in all decks, and, ever, and even ever so slightly nerfs Sejuani's overall stat package. That is true that Sejuani is slightly ever so slightly nerfed with um, the Fury of the North being Sejuani's champion spell. But yeah, th this spell is, is just so darn efficient. And in a world of like where three damage or plus three is, is you know, like the top of the line, if Fury of the North is the only thing doing plus four or, you know, there's not like fast speed four damage kind of things. Like this is a, a spell that really stands above the others um, as far as rate. So um, it makes sense to nerf it like this. So it's not also the plus four with the um, power, but it does give the plus four to the health because of Freljord's um, defensive-oriented spells. So that makes sense. Um, all right, Togrek, we'll deal with that after this. Um, Trifarian Assessor also is going to be the only other thing that's going to change. It's not going to change any text whatsoever except for the mana cost. And so that will just cost five instead of four. Um, which is kind of a big deal. Um, let's read what it says. So Trifarian Assessor is too effective in decks built to maximize it, giving them access to large amounts of card draw while also providing decent board development. We like the card stat line where it is to preserve interesting potential with deck buff effects, so we're increasing the cost to slow it down and reduce its efficiency. That is kind of a, an interesting effect. So basically just making this from four to five mana doesn't seem like a very big deal on its face, but I think the reason why this could be a big deal is just um, just curve considerations when you're thinking about like the Ash Sejuani deck. There's a lot of times where you just kind of have to play Trifarian Assessor on turn four because you need to play a four drop um, where you otherwise wouldn't, you know, like where, you know, like when it's five mana, it kind of, muddles up the spots with Averroes and Hearthguard, right? Like you maybe have like two Hearthguards and Assessor or two Assessors and a Hearthguard in hand. Like those kind of hands happen quite a bit. And so having them cost the same amount means that they will um, overlap more. And so that, that will make the Ash Sejuani player stumble more than they would have previously. You know, there's a lot of times where you have an Omen Hawk hit a Trifarian Assessor, you get to play your Trifarian Assessor on turn four, then play your Avaros and Hearthguard on turn five. And just taking out that ability, that is a big deal, honestly. So yeah, that that's that's certainly going to be a nerf for the Ash Sejuani deck. Now, I think that this is not going to kill that deck at all, even though these, these are both nerfs for that deck. I don't think that, that that deck is going to be dead. I don't think it's really going anywhere. I think it's going to still be a good, strong deck. But these two changes do hurt the power of that deck. Absolutely. 
Um, let's see. And then the only other card changes are are not really actually changes, just some treasure and Zonite Urchin. They're just cleaning up the text box between them. They used to say to play me, discard one and draw one. Um, and that's just kind of weird. And so it's just it's just a playability. So you just uh, play this, discard a, a card to draw one. Um, and this the thing that the thing that does help is it does actually buff both of these up. Because since they are um, play, now you are you are able to play these with no other cards in hand. You know, before if you didn't have a card in hand, you couldn't play your urchin. Now, if you're you know if you're in top deck mode and you top deck urchin or top deck some treasure, you you get to just play them, and so that's definitely a buff to these cards. And they were already pretty good. All right, looks like we we got a new board with the new region coming out, Celestial Summit. So we got a Targon board. Um, this board looks pretty sweet. I like the, um, just like the, the color scheme of the board. This little thing looks pretty cool, whatever this thing is. Um, yeah, we got a cool little staff here. All right. And then we get a puppy for, um, a new guardian. And the puppy's name is Cosmo. <laughs> a loyal personality i like it two pretty awesome looking card backs sunrise and moonfall daybreak and nightfall pretty cool looking card backs and then we also get four new emotes looks like we get a lulu emote a diana um uh, this one is Tariq, I think, and I guess this would be Nocturne, probably. Um, okay, yeah, thanks, thanks, AJ. Yep, there we go, there's, there's the link to the patch notes. Um, all right, and then, uh, looks like there's a new bundle for 1,422 coins that gets you the board and Cosmo and an exclusive Targon icon, which that's this icon is pretty sweet looking icon. Definitely want that icon. The Targon emote bundle is available for 570 coins, so 25% discount. New deck bundle. Okay. Uh, ranked rewards in the new season. Call the Mountain brings with it a new ranked season. So new ranked reward icons um let's see the accounts have dropped the same amount as what they dropped before um okay so it looks like these are the, the these are gonna be the new icons for the next uh season so these seasons last two months long um uh, so then basically the season will last from this expansion until the next expansion in October. And for those of y'all that love expeditions, looks like there's going to be some more expedition, you know, new expedition archetypes because we got a new region. So now like the new region is going to be paired with all the old regions. Um, so, you know, a whole bunch of new expedition archetypes. So um, even more craziness in expeditions. Okay. Um, you can now select certain personalization items when queuing for labs. Ooh, you can get your own emotes and card backs in the labs now. All right, so there we go. That is going to be patch 1.8. It will be live tomorrow, August 26th. Cannot wait for that. That's going to be awesome with the new uh, stuff. All right, those of y'all watching on YouTube, um, let me know what you want to see from the new region what kind of combinations of champions you want to see we're going to be experimenting with all seven of them all seven of the new champions and all the new cards um you know a ton over the next month for sure that's what we do here on the channel but thank you so much for watching the patch one eight notes and i'll see you for the next video